In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You certainly heard the word activism and the times Christian activism. These days we hear and see witnesses of what activism is about. You see and um, learn about the youth who have gathered themselves to deliver a message to our ruling um, layers in this country about guns and about violence in schools and everywhere. And there's so much coverage about this. This is an example of activism taken to a high level. There's also an activism, another example of activism coming from those who are Christians who are trying to protect unborn lives that are not in the, in the range of hundreds as the ones lost by gun shooting, but in the range of 800,000 a year. Is this correct, Carrie? Close to a million aborted children. And it's interesting that when this kind of activism happens, we hear nothing about it on TV, on the radio, or in the press. But this is a kind of activism that, that we often place next to Protestant denominations in this country. We look at them how well they feed the poor. We look at them how nice they have the food banks and how they minister to different causes in town and, and so on. And we feel ourselves a handicap. The reason being that they put a lot of emphasis of, on activism. And that the Orthodox Church, not that it neglects this, puts a great deal of emphasis on the only way that leads to salvation. On the mysteries of the church. On the mystical aspect of our living as Orthodox Christians. I remind you that St. Basil the Great, a saint in our church, obviously, in both in the Roman Catholic and Orthodox Church, was not only a saint, but an activist as well. He's the one who established the first modern hospitals. But for us as Orthodox Christians, activism, feeding the poor, will have no meaning unless it starts in the mystical life of the church. Today, as the, the hymn said, the Apolitikion, Today is the summary, in fact, the beginning of our salvation. The great feast of the Annunciation, the beginning of our salvation, the revelation of the age-old mystery, of the mystery existing from e forever. Today closes a cycle that began in paradise, in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, after the fall. And God told Eve that her seed will take care of the serpent's that is, that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, will destroy the devil in death. It took this long. It is this mystery from before all ages that is revealed to us today. But brothers and sisters, not only is in, this is not in the paper, and you will, you will not see it on CNN or on NPR, but you will not be able to partake of it unless you are like the Virgin Mary. And I will explain to you how the Virgin Mary is. First of all, what happened? Big things have simple solutions. A girl, the Virgin Mary, what was she, 14 years old, betrothed. She had been at the temple with the widows. And when she hit age of her natural um, period, she could not stay at the temple anymore. She had to be betrothed to Joseph, an old man who had been married and had children. And the girl has this extraordinary encounter with the archangel who approaches her. Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. She's the favored one that finally, after so many generations, mankind produced. That's Mary. Rejoice, rejoice. And she was troubled. And the angel tells her the words that we hear the most in the gospel. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. What you have done thus far, preparing in purity, growing in God, knowing the word of God, what you have done by, your, by on your own is meeting now the favor of God. Your effort and God come together in what we call synergy to produce something miraculous extraordinary nobody thought about this before although the prophets wrote about it the human mind could not understand it rejoice and mary couldn't understand it herself the archangel told her that she would become 
pregnant and then he, uh, he will have a son and his name will be Jesus. Meaning what? The Messiah, the one who saves. Uh-huh. And he will be from the house of David and he will reign, he will take over and his kingdom will have no end. And Mary was herself from the house of David. She knew the history of her family. She knew that there was to come a king. That's why she says, how shall this be since I have no husband? You see here, she wasn't worried that she was going to bear the son of God. She was worried that she cannot conceive without a husband. And the archangel says, oh, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. This is between the Holy Spirit and you. The power of God will overshadow you. Overshadow. Remember the transfiguration up on the mountain, how the disciples, the three of them, were overshadowed? The same thing here. That kind of power will come upon you, and you'll conceive the Son of God. And for you to believe this, with God everything is possible. Look at your cousin Elizabeth. Six months ago, she conceived. She was old, she was barren, and she conceived. And Mary got the point. This is supernatural here. This is the mi mystery. And she submitted to this. She said, Behold, the, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. In great humility and obedience, the synergy circle closes. And in this moment, the Son of God is conceived. Which explains why these people go out for this march of life that is never advertised to cry for the almost a million children aborted. Because life begins at the time of conception. Have no doubt about this. Don't read the paper. Read the fathers. See what the church thinks about this. Read the gospel. This is when the Son of God was incarnate. Life took place in the Virgin Mary's, Virgin Mary's womb. A mystery. A mystery. Glory be to God, she was not of the one million to go to the clinic. What would that have been, meant for us? So, let us see now, as Orthodox Christians, we're to be active in doing things, but only after participating in the mystical life of the church. How do we do this? How did Mary do this? The first step, Mary prepared. In order for anything good to come out from us, God has to be present and make it happen. Would this be life at conception? Would this be raising children? Would this be healing somebody who is sick? Would this be building a church? Would this be starting a company? You name it. We turn to God and we prepare. God will provide. How did Mary prepare? The 12 years of living a life in purity at the temple, being betrothed and being a virgin. Step two, participate at the mystery. Be there when the mysteries take place and engage. Mary was present when the angel, archangel came to her. Mary engaged in a careful discussion with the angel. Mary prayed. Mary was humble and obedient, giving the answer, accepting God's will. The mystery for Mary was her pregnancy. She bore the Son of God in her womb. You know, as you receive Holy Communion, you receive the body and blood of Christ, the resurrected Christ. She had Him in her womb for nine months, day and night. What a mystery this is. Continuously experiencing God within her. Another aspect of the mystery. You know, in the Roman Catholic Church, we hear about the uh, Immaculate Conception. I mentioned this at the Vesper service last night. That Mary was, you know, immaculate from her parents and so on. Well, in the Orthodox Church, we do not believe this. Because had this been the case, Mary would have been the Savior without sin. No. Mary was not guilty of the original sin. Guilt does not exist in the Orthodox Church. We're not guilty people. We're sinful people. We're not guilty of that in the original sin, but we experience the consequences of that sin. 
And Mary did the same too. Distance from God, expulsion from the Garden of Eden, that is. Sickness and death. Mary was no stranger of these things. However, the mystery that she partook in was that she received God in her womb. And the Holy Father stated that when this happened, she was cleansed and she received the Holy Spirit, her personal Pentecost. Great mystery. Preparation led to these mysteries. And the third step that we heard about in the gospel reading at Orthros, after preparing, after being there for the mystery, is giving thanks. You heard this from me before. We come here to receive communion only to give thanks and to make that really happen. What did Mary say today after the archangel called her, I'm sorry, the Elizabeth called, called her blessed? Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. She magnified the Lord. She brought glory to God with her soul, with everything she had in gratitude because the Lord had mercy upon her, looked upon her in His grace. Prepare, participate, give thanks. In what way? The fourth step here, sacrifice, sacrificial thanksgiving in service and in suffering. Did Mary serve? Of course, she served God directly because she accepted to bring the Son of God to flesh. She served God directly. Did Mary sacrifice? We don't know about Mary tithing or coming 10% of her time to the temple. But Mary sacrificed her whole life to raise the Son of God, to follow Him. That kind of sacrificial. Did Mary suffer? Think of her presence at the cross. The Father said that there's no greater suffering than the one that Mary went through when her son, the sinless one, the one she conceives today in this mystical way, was crucified. So today, brothers and sisters, we give thanks. There's only one way to participate in the life of the mysteries of, of the church. Prepare. And how are we preparing? The wisdom of the church fathers who arranged the calendar of the church, the life, the pulse of the Orthodox Church, places this feast day during Lent, always, so we could prepare for it. It's a season of fasting, of increased prayer time, of sweat to be there where the where, when the archangel comes. That is in the church where the mystery takes place. Holy Lent is a season of repentance. This is our preparation. How about our participation in mysteries? Well, of course we think of Holy Communion. We know of confession and repentance. But above, a different category of mysteries like the one today. It can simply be an informative lesson to us. Today, 2,000 years ago, the Virgin Mary received the Archangel and He begot the Son. Or it could be a transformative knowledge, not only of the mind, but of the heart as well. Let God participate in this and with that kind of synergy be drawn into the mystery of this great feast of Annunciation. How about Thanksgiving? We must close the loop for this to happen. If we do not give thanks, like Mary, my soul magnifies the Lord with everything I have. But I say, Lord, I give thanks to you, but only with a little bit I have. That grace will not fill in completely. And finally, is this thanksgiving of ours sacrificial? Do we suffer when we give thanks in our service? Or is it just a casual, comfortable way of giving thanks? Maybe for a minute, or for a coin, or for whatever that is. So important. The more we receive, the more we should be thankful for in a sacrificial way. In order to accept what is given to us. Last night at Vespers, we heard two readings from the Old Testament. The first one was from the book of Genesis. We heard about Jacob, how he was night, and uh, he was by himself, isolated, and he placed his head on a rock to sleep. And behold, he saw a vision 
a ladder from the heavens all the way to the earth on which angels were going up and down. This ladder prefigured the Virgin Mary. He was in awe. He participated in the mystery. He was engaged. You know what he said at the end of the vision? How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven, the Virgin Mary. And he built a, an altar and he brought sacrifices. He sacrificed from what he had, the best for God to give things. The second reading was from the prophecy of Ezekiel. We read here how the prophet was taking the vision of the heavenly temple. And one of the gates, the eastern gate, was described to him by God. This gate was shut. The Lord said to him, This gate shall remain shut. It shall not be opened, and no one shall enter by it. For the Lord, the God of Israel, shall enter by it. Therefore, it shall remain shut. The eastern gate in his vision, also prefigures the Virgin Mary, who will receive conception as a virgin and will give birth as a virgin without opening the womb, the way it's normally done. You know what Ezekiel said at the end? After participating in the mystery, after being drawn in the mystery, of being with God and experience God, I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. When we participate in the mysteries in this church, the glory of God fills it up. It becomes an awesome place. It becomes an awesome place. None other than the house of God. So let us give thanks in a way that allows to build that altar and give thanks to God in a beautiful way. Give thanks sacrificially to build the church. When we participate in the mysteries, God comes in synergy with us to build the church. But we have to be able to see that glory of God in the mystical celebration of his annunciation, of his birth, of his crucifixion, of his transfiguration, of a birth of a child, of the blooming of a flower, and give thanks to God sacrificially. Beautiful feast day today, longer word for me. We give thanks to God for another reason for bringing the very Virgin Mary in our midst tonight. Panagia chose to come to visit with us on her feast day. Great mystical presence. It cannot be comprehended through food or fun. Let us prepare for that too. Let us be here. Let us receive her and immediately give thanks sacrificially. God bless you all. A beautiful celebration of Annunciation and a um, the ending of the great and holy Lent, as we have the last week, uh, with uh, good strength. In the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen.